This lecture series is going to be called, uh, from actually from the title of the book of Rabbi Moshe, Chaim Lezato, The Way of God, or Der Hashem. Uh, this is going to be the introduction to the book for uh, most people out there who will have the book written by Rabbi Ariel Kaplan. Uh, that book is a fantastic book, and I highly recommend it to be part of, of your library. However, the translating of, of Rabbi Moshe Hamlezato's uh, material is very complicated, and therefore even the English translation of the book by Rabbi Ariel Kaplan can be a bit complicated. And so when you read through the material, it's like grasping some of the concepts, just like we had in The Path of the Just, there are some of the concepts that you read, and it's, it's even in the English translation, it's written at such a high level that uh, you really have to meditate on each section of it. Uh, the translation that we're going to use is going to be found in, um, on Torah.org, I believe. Um, and it's, uh, it is the tr it's basically a, the rewrite of Rabbi Ariel Kaplan's book by Rabbi Yaakov Feldman, I believe. And so for those who will watch the lecture series over the next so many months, uh, you can easily go to Torah.org and you can pull up that lecture, I mean that uh, book, and read along with us as we deal with the text. Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lezato was a scholar of the 18th century. He was born in Padua, Italy, uh, distinguished to a distinguished Jewish family, uh, very well-to-do family, therefore was able to be very well educated. He was, first of all, highly educated in Talmudic studies, uh, halacha, uh, just in general everything about the Tanakh, uh, very, um, very strongly schooled in, in the knowledge of Jewish wisdom. Not only that, but he was well well healed in, in secular knowledge of literature. Hence, the reason why his, his writings are so uh, um, complex is he was a uh, literist. You know, he knew how to write at such a level that, that um, it makes translating his, uh, his works very difficult. His knowledge was impressive. He quickly earned a reputation uh, as a scholar of rare ability. When Lizato was 20 years old, he joined a Kabbalistic group and immersed himself in mystical studies. And in 1727, he claimed to hear uh, a voice from Hashem uh, that began to sort of guide him and give him messages so that he would write these things down. Um, this revelation, he said, came to him like a voice in his mouth. It's like he recognized the things that he began to speak were not of his own accord, but were, were divine. And many of us have even experienced possibly this in a small way in personal prayer. You'll be praying something and you'll realize this is not, this is my voice, but this is not my mind. This is the mind of Hashem. It's something is speaking through me in personal prayer. Well, obviously this man, being a very uh, uh, strong, righteous Zadik, uh, Hashem granted him extreme ability to take very complex ideas and to put them in uh, succinct order. The Ramchal introduces his work in the way of God and his introduction to the way of God in the, in the book is not what we expect it to be. He says that, um, that, that to study the things of God requires a systematic approach. And you would think that he would approach it um, in, a, in a, a more of a uh, direct ABC, lay it out fashion. Instead, he takes what seems to be sort of chaotic um, 
information and lines it up to such precision that we can truly understand it. Now, there's a footnote in the introduction that says that the point, uh, our point will be that while it might be argued that the book's title is derived from the verse that says in Jeremiah 5.4, they have become foolish for they did not know the way of God, which underscores the importance of knowledge of the service of God. The title actually is based on another verse which has a whole other meaning. This is not just about the service of God, but it's about something else. We're going to examine what that something else is. Let's look at the first point of, of, of his purpose of his book. It is far better known things in, the, in a structure, in an orderly way, as I said, than a haphazard one. I don't know if you guys have uh, experienced this, but if you have an office desk that's cluttered, it makes it very difficult to concentrate when you're sitting at the desk, right? Uh, my wife always talks about it's how important it is to get up in the morning and make the bed and make sure everything's straight. It starts your day off with order, right? And that is partly what we're talking about here. It's not just about the perfection of things around you, but really what we're going to find out is that Ramchal is talking about something that is very much an internal thing. It's about ordering yourself personally. And sometimes before we can begin to order ourselves psychologically and spiritually, we have to start ordering the things around us, putting things in proper order. At some level, maybe uh, a level of obsessive compulsive but not a disorder, in a way that you become obsessed with bringing order in your life. <clears throat> he says that, we've heard the statement that says we can't see the tree because of the forest, and he says the chaotic nature of a forest uh, is, is, um, is really how we become confused. It's like looking at a forest versus looking at a beautiful garden that's been groomed, I love to see the uh, beautiful pictures of gardens from Europe, right? These huge estates, and they spend millions of dollars and, you know, several decades to have these beautiful groomed gardens with fountains. And there's something about going into those gardens with such order. He says, he offers that we become befuddled when we confront things that are set out of a hod in a hodgepodge fashion and that we can't determine a correlation between the whole and its parts and between the parts themselves. Our, our mind becomes taxed then, he says, and we shut down. This is a fact. We know that when we have too much stimuli, we shut down. I talk about children with autism. Uh, the, this, this, these children are overstimulated because they're, they're, they have this super heightened sense of awareness. And so they become overstimulated, and what do they do? They just shut down. They, they, they cease to communicate. And some of these children are operating at such a high level of sensitivity that they stay shut down most of the time. They just cannot operate that way. Now, a normal functioning adult can have a lot of difficult things that happen in their life, uh, tragedies, uh, after, one tragedy after another, and then all of a sudden they psychologically shut down. Even though they're still functioning, they're still going around and doing the things they are able to do, but behind the scenes they can't even uh, as much as try to figure out how to work their phone or to balance a checkbook. It's just You just become overtaxed. The Ramchal is going to relate the fact that spiritually this is how most people are operating. Most people on the spiritual level are operating this way. They're in complete chaos. The information is so complex that they cannot begin to figure it out. I've heard people say, well, I'm not really religious and I'm not planning on being religious because there are so many opinions out there. There's so many ideas and everybody's right in their, you know, at some level. So it's just too confusing. I can't deal with it. Well, what Rabbi Moshe Hamlazato, which we will refer to as the Ramchal from this point on, thank you, that... Uh, he says the purpose of the book is to bring order to yourself so that you can begin to navigate the way of God, right? To find the way of God. 
This is not really a book about saying this is the way of God. It's about ordering you in such a fashion so that you begin to know what the way of God is actually going to be. Um, he says, as a consequence, the very thing that excited us as much from the start, the possibility of understanding something clearly, proves uh, to be our nemesis. The opposite is true, though when we come upon data that is laid out in order and by category, we're delighted and pleased. I like order. We all like order. But sometimes... Uh, Chaos can be the norm if we're not careful. This is the reason why in Jewish life uh, things are so regimented. Uh, prayers in the morning, prayers at noon, prayer in the evening, prayers for every, every, uh, everything that you put in your mouth. There seems to be a, a very strict order to things. Why? Because this is the way of God. This is how you begin to develop clarity in your, in your walk with Hashem. Now, on the surface, the Ramchal seems to be offering <clears throat> a reasonable enough insight that matches our experience. As we well know from the path of the just, he says very clearly, I'm not going to tell you something you don't know. I'm just going to put it in a way that you can understand it better. He goes, he goes far to explain the idea of mental stress, but that that isn't what we've uh, expected. We didn't expect him to be addressing in the book issues that causes, um, I want to say mental and spiritual stress. It is clear that he's conveying a deeper message here. The Ramchal seems to be addressing an inner life, something that is going on inside of us that can be very complex. And it's not about trying just about the order of your desk or getting up and making your bed. All of those are fine and good things. But it's about examining and bringing order to self, <clears throat> aligning things up so that you begin to understand yourself. The Ramkal seems to be addressing this inner life with such clarity. He apparently contrasting a uh, perplexed, torn, tortured, godless soul who can't see the connection between things. When the person of faith and religious uh, focus, uh, it, it draws a strong contrast. For the tortured soul often finds himself in the midst of a wild, chaotic forest of anguish day after day. He or she never knows what he'll come upon moment to moment. And he says, and can't be sure he'll know what to make of it once he, be, he comes upon it given that things are often muddled and haphazard for him. But if a person of full faith and knowledge walks about in a veritable garden of Eden laid out in full splendor, each and everything he meets confirms his faith in an orderly way and meaningfully and reveals the shrewdness and wisdom of Hashem. The concept is he wants to bring us to a place where we bring ourselves in succinct order so that we can comprehend the things of God. We have acquaintances, friends, and we often will get a phone call from someone who is, loves the Torah, loves to study the Torah. Uh, the, their lives are regimented around the one thing, and that is the study of Torah. And yet they will have a spouse that's not interested at all. They just don't, just not interested. And the reason why is that person generally is dealing with the chaos. And the Ramchal is saying if we can clear up the chaos, then you will, you will begin to be able to bring enough order so that you can study Torah, so that you can begin to understand the wisdom of Torah. He's going to include this idea that it is the study of Torah that helps to bring order in your chaos. It's the study of Torah, the discussion of Torah, it's the mitzvot that actually begins to align the things internally that has caused you to feel so muddled. And that is a very important point. Um, <clears throat> the Ramchal intention seems then to be providing us with a great master plan uh, laid out in order and thus allows us great bliss 
and an ease that true and knowledgeable believers enjoy. But then the Ramchal seems to turn a corner in this book, and it begins. He begins to advising us how to analyze things, which we'll examine uh, here soon. His first, uh, the Ramchal's first rule of an orderly and logical understanding of things is that we need to consider everything in its own context and in relationship to our relation to the whole. Now, let's pause for a second and think about this statement. The Ramchal uh, it says, how do you understand uh, something, it's, it's orderly and logical understanding of things, is first consider everything in its own context. So, if I were to, I'm going to give a, a, a phrase or a word, and I want you, us to th think about what comes into your mind. What, what's the first thing that came to your mind? Image of a truck? What came to your mind? Rumble. Rumble, right? What else? Image. Just the image of a truck, maybe with mud on it, right? Uh, maybe, a, maybe somebody thought of a monster truck. Other people may have thought of a utility truck. But in reality, what the Ramchal is saying, don't just look at the object. To, to really understand what, where he's going with this thing is to say, I look at the truck, but I understand and I will examine everything that the truck is made of. What its purpose, what it's built for, who built the thing, who's the master builder, where was it built, what type of materials it's made out of. Are the materials durable? I mean, you see the level in which we're examining just this very item called a truck. The Ramchaus is, is going to begin, begin to give us the ability to look within ourselves that way. To not just say, I'm spiritually confused, or I, uh, I'm having difficulty connecting to God. It's about examining all of the intricate details as to why you are who you are and who you really are the um, <clears throat> in short he advises us to keep in mind that if if something is is a part of something else then we need to know what the whole is part of and vice versa if it's a cause of something then we need to know its effect and vice versa if it is a quality then we need to know the essence associated with it vice versa and then we need to know whether the thing we are analyzing is a general principle or deal uh, or a detail. Since doing all that helps to provide us with a complete picture, the astute reader couldn't help but notice that the way of God, this book, is structured just that way. And while it would serve us well to point out that, there really isn't going to be the time. There isn't enough years or months in the days of study to be able to go through the immense detail that is available in this book. Now all of this logically elegant and essential if we're to ever understand things in this world of change and chaos. But on a deeper level we also find that the Ramchal is offering us another profound lesson in self-knowledge along the way. His point thus seems to be that if we ever are to determine who we are, and better ourselves, we too would have to see ourselves in our own context and in relation to the whole. For while we reach, while we each uh, are, I'm sorry, for while we're each unique with wants and needs of our own, we still all um, are dedica dedicated toward explaining that we have a unique position and place in this world. As we approach the study of this book, we're going to be seeing, seeing that the Ramchal lays out a very logical flow in this whole process. If we approach this book, that it is a book of literature, um, that it, um, it's a study on, on just a way of God, then we're going to miss the fact that he wrote this book with a specific purpose for each individual to read the book, take and bring order out of their chaotic lives and begin to serve Hashem and live for Hashem. He lays out 
uh, a few things, and we're going to go through and look at the sort of outline of the book real quick. The Way of God is divided into four main sections. And if you want to go to your um, table of contents, correct, is divided into four main sections. Number one, fun the fundamental principles of reality. Number two, divine providence. Number three, the soul, inspiration, prophecy, and the supernatural. And then number four is divine service. Remember that the construct of this book is built in such a way, by the time you get to the end, you will be able to do divine service at a much higher level, right? But first you have to understand the fundamental principles of reality, meaning that if you don't have, if you're not pragmatic about life and what's going on around you and who you are and what's your purpose in the world, then for sure you're, you're going to be stuck. Next is divine providence. He's going to bring clarity in the concept of divine providence. Sometimes we struggle with trying to bring organization into our life. Because we don't, we, we, we see things as um, without purpose. That there's no, there, there would be no divine necessity in what's going on in my life. And in reality, we understand, and it's a very fundamental principle of Judaism, that says that everything has divine purpose. Everything is of God's divine purpose. Why? Because everything is in God. God is one, right? So when we understand divine purpose, and he'll lay this out, then we'll have clarity with so many things that at some level you become immune to the chaos that affects you, the chaos in the world. For example, when you have um, an incident that takes place in your life that you think, I don't understand why this is happening to me. Is that a fair question to ask? I don't understand why this has happened to me. Yes, it is. It is. It is a very fair qu question. But the Ramchal would say, understanding divine uh, providence does not give you the answers as to why things happen, but it, um, it helps you to become, uh, what do you call it, um, protected by the negative aspects of not understanding that there is divine providence in the world. And that when chaotic things happen to you, when difficult things happen to you, you can ask the question, I don't understand why this is happening. But at the same time, you go in the back of your mind, there is a plan. And that's what he's talking about. Next, the soul. He talks about understanding the soul, inspiration, prophecy, and the supernatural. Now, the fundamental principles of reality encompasses uh, these things. The creator, the purpose of creation, mankind, human responsibility, and the spiritual realm. Divine providence is going to encompass divine providence in general, mankind in this world, personal providence, Israel and other nations, how divine providence works, the sequel of divine providence, and the influence of the, the universe itself, the stars, and then the details of divine providence. Next, the idea of the soul inspiration, prophecy, and supernatural. He's going to break it down this way. The soul and its influence. The art of affecting change in the universe by means of divine names. Next is the inspiration, uh, inspiration and prophecy. Then prophetic experience. And last is uh, talking about Moshe the prophet. The divine service is going to be dealing with these items, serving God in general, Torah study, the love and fear of God, Shema Israel, and, and its blessings, Hit Baradut, prayer, the sequence of the, of the day, meaning what do you do when, uh, throughout your day, uh, intermittent observances, seasonal mitzvot, and the uh, incidental observance and blessings Obviously, uh, he, he will go into some detail. Um, we're going to find this book very life-changing. The path of the just was very profound in the sense that we were able to see 
where we're at compared to what a tzaddik is, right? Here, you're going to go, this, this is doable. I mean, this is doable. I, I can find my way to Hashem at a higher level if I simply begin to understand these principles and break them down. Uh, as we approach uh, the first chapter of the book, which we'll do next Thursday, what I'd ask you to do is to read through that chapter and come in sort of armed, ready to have discussion about the, the chapter itself. That concludes this uh, introduction to the Path of the Just from the rabbi, uh, which we will call by his acronym, the Ramchal.